My name is Robert E. Kinslow. I was born July 23rd, 1925, and I'm 95 years old. I attended church right here in this building. I attended the First United Brethren Church. It was just two blocks from where I lived on 3rd Street. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the world thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, and so forth. <laughs> I remember the building as a red brick building, is what I remember in the 30s, the early to middle 30s, and perhaps clear in the early. Couldn't have gone too far in the 40s, because you know, in the early 40s, I wound up in the military service. In those days, you went to church, everybody did, on, on church on Sunday morning, <coughs> excuse me, you went to church on Sunday night, and you went to church on Wednesday night's prayer meeting. And uh, this United Brethren Church, like the typical churches in, had a sanctuary, and it had a choir loft, and it had uh, meeting facilities in and, and a lower level. It had a sloping floor, of course, and, and it had two aisles. It had a center section seating and side seating. It had uh, an aisle on each side. You got the front there, there's an altar, and it was a nice, nice altar, and uh, it had a choir loft and, and the pulpit on its on the so on side. So it was, it was very impressive, and it was very holy type. Even though I was a young kid, I always felt a feeling of reverence from that time on, so it, it had that kind of impression on me. You behaved yourself in the church building. There's no monkey business going on around the church. Young people, young kids have trouble being sitting still that much. We went to church, it was mom and dad, and one, my brother was on one side, and my, I was on the other side. We weren't allowed to sit next to each other in the church. But it was, it was a very good church, a very active church. Had a nice choir, I enjoyed listening to the choir. I remember the one thing I enjoyed, they had a good bass section. I'd like to listen to the bass section. And this happened to be during the Depression years. I remember one incident. My, my father had done his prayer, and my brother was next in line, and he was an ex definite extrovert. He did a prayer. I remember, I, I remember what is he doing? And he, but he did a prayer. And he ended up the prayers by saying, But Lord, and we thank you for our debts. See, he had heard stories, he had heard conversations apparently about people being in debt, and he thought that was something to be thankful for, so he thanked the Lord for that. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about this photo and um, where this was taken. Well, this was taken at the house we lived in, just a couple of blocks from here. Taken in 1934, as you can see on the way. And of course, that's my brother and I, and the, the older one is me. During those years, it was towards the end of, uh, end of the Depression years, but, but still people were, had different uh, ways of making a living, and people would, would tour neighborhoods with a, this type of arrangement, the wagon and a goat, and go from house to house, and so listening, taking pictures, that's how they made, were making their living. And of course, my mom couldn't resist it, simply for two beautiful boys like that. She couldn't resist having a picture taken. <laughs> yeah, you can see all those people, I could probably, uh, if I had time to go through it, I could probably name some people. <laughs> if I had time to look at the picture, you might even find me there. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That was a church I went to. That brings back, almost brings tears my eyes to see that whole church building there. Yes. Yeah. Very nice. So I want to ask you if you know who this person is. <laughs> yes, I do. That's Leon Russell. That's an interesting story in a way. <clears throat> Leon Russell happened to be a neighbor of my mother, mom and dad. They had 11 acres of property. Around. And it turns out that Leon Russell wanted to buy my parents' property. And he, uh, and I didn't, of course, I, I knew who Leon Russell was. I did. Of course, my dad being a generation before me, you can imagine, you can imagine his thoughts when he saw this young man with a beard and long hair. He says, that young man has a property, he wants to buy our property. He says, I don't even talk to him about that. And I said, well, yeah, that's Leon Russell. He, 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 he can afford to buy it probably. Beards and uh, long hair it was just becoming a thing. And, and 
And like I said, my father, <laughs> being the next door, he didn't really approve of that. But that was not to be ashamed of. That was just, that was just part of the change of times. And I accepted that, and so does everybody else. I talked to people that were, in fact, just over the past weekend, I had, I had an occasion to uh, visit with some people over on uh, Fort Gibson Lake or, and for, for lunch. And uh, I mentioned that this event that I was coming to that, and how flattered I was being asked to come over for an interview. And one of the ladies there that was, I'd say was in her, she was probably in, in her 60s or 70s. He said, well, I know who Leon Russell is. I said, yes, of course, and she described him. And, Boy, he just had great admiration. I said, I used to go down to the Canes Ballroom. About, uh, he used to play down there. I used to go down there and party and dance and have a good time. And, and I said, well, what? I asked her, I said, what did he look like? Oh, she says, he had long white hair and he had a long white beard. And she says, he was a fantastic musician. We used to really enjoy it. I was just familiar with Leon Russell. I, I knew who, who he was and what, but I wasn't a, a real fan. Not opposed to anything, I just wasn't a fan. Uh, I just knew him and knew who he was and had respect for him as a musician. Serge always got your attention. <clears throat> it was very impressive. There wasn't another church in the neighborhood or in, in this area out here like that. And it always made you just want to stop and get out and go inside. And uh, we did have a lot of walk-in. I remember a lot of people, a lot of strangers would be in church. That we didn't. That was a usual thing. The preacher was all inviting them to come down and want to join the church. It was just a, a welcoming place and a place you wanted to be in. I found out what was going on here by watching television. I had a corner of my eye. I saw something that looked familiar, and then I, I looked at the uh, TV set and I said, "Better take a look again." And they put the picture up again. I said, "Oh, that's the church I used to attend to." They done something to the outside. It didn't look the same on the outside. And this was, used to be a red brick building, but that's the church. Because I always remember those steps and going up and down those steps three times a week. <laughs> I thought, well, they're putting a lot of effort, a lot of work into doing something with this building. And I'm so happy that it says that something is going on that's going to preserve the church building, preserve the atmosphere of the church. And so I followed up on it, went to my computer and got a, got a phone number and everything. And I, I contact you by email let you know that I used to go to church here. I noticed you're keeping it the same center, calling it the church studio, and, and I, I commend you for that. And uh, yes, I think it'll have, it should have some influence because everybody that comes here to record is going to remember we went to the church to, to do our recording. Uh, just to share with you, just a compliment on what you're doing. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with what's going on, and it quite surprised me when I when I just accidentally came across the information, but uh, I just I just recommend you just keep up what you're doing. You're doing you're doing a great job.